Hello folks, this is Sean here back with another video from my channel 300 Bod, and today I'm going to be taking a look at some of the input controllers that I have for my Commodore Amiga line of personal computers. I'm sure there are several more out there, but this is just what I have in my collection. So let's get started. So next to my beautiful Amiga 500, I've got a collection of various input devices. Um, before I get started though, I wanted to thank my uh, friend for making these um, really cute little uh, Commodore PET 300 baud stickers for me. Um, there she made a couple of different variants. This one has 300 baud on the screen. This one's got a little smiley face. Super cute. Um, I really appreciate it. So this is just super nice. So taking a look at the mice, I'll start with this one first. This is the... Uh, uh, original Commodore mouse. Um, there's actually one that was made uh, to fit the Amiga 1000. And instead of going straight in, it actually had an angle, a 90 degree bend, so it fit the contour of the machine better. Uh, but this is what would have come with your typical Amiga 500 or 2000 series computer. Um, commonly referred to as the tank mouse. There are a few variants of it. Uh, I've seen them with the pads like this. I've seen them with four little corner pads. Um, and uh, there's probably a few variants, but uh, this is your standard ball mouse. It's probably a 300, maybe even as low as 150 dots per square inch. Um, but when you consider that the screen resolution of the Amiga was typically running 300 by 200, you didn't really need a very high DPI because your cursor would be zipping all over the place if you had really high DPI. Um, so one common failure with the old ball, ball mouse like this is you get gook built up on the ball and then it rubs off inside the rollers. There's a couple of rollers in here and those will get gooked up. Now this mouse is actually pretty clean. I need to kind of clean up the outside, but, uh, but internally it, it should work very, very well. Now I've used these mice a lot. I've worn them out before. I've actually worn out the buttons where that you lost your click, um, which is, was very annoying. But back in the day, you could just run to the store and buy another Amiga mouse. Uh, not something you can do so much anymore. So I do have a few spares uh, I keep around, but, uh, but that's the original tank mouse. Now Commodore did um, revise their mouse a little bit later. This is uh, what you'd find on the, uh, the models such as the uh, Amiga 4000 and 1200. Um, and someplace, I'm gonna have to dig out, I've got the, uh, what they call the pregnant mouse for the Amiga 3000. So I'm gonna put this video on pause after I get to showing you this one. And uh, we'll take a look at that one as well. So digging through my box of Amiga stuff, I actually found another one of these uh, mice that came with the Amiga 4000 or 1200. I also found three more spare uh, tank mice that are exactly the same as the first tank mouse that I showed you. Um, same exact pad layout. So those are just like, you could say, some spares. And then I even found this tank mouse. So this tank mouse is actually the one that came with the Amiga 1000 computer. So you can see how the end connector is shaped differently. And that's because this one would plug into the side of the Amiga 1000 and it prevented the cable from sticking way out. So nice little design feature on this mouse. Um, I probably even have another one of these uh, in the box with my Amiga 1000, which I'll feature in a future episode. Um, but uh, you can see this one actually opens a little differently. It goes, pushes in and goes down instead of rotates. So a little bit different design on that tank mouse. Another controller that uh, Commodore made was the uh, controller for the, uh, this is for the CDTV, uh, which I have a CDTV. Um, I've never actually turned on my CDTV. I bought it quite a few years ago on eBay, got it really cheap, um, and uh, never done anything with it. Um, but uh, this is the remote control that they had for the CDTV, which is really interesting. Uh, kind of cool when you think about it, but uh, probably not the best mouse in the world. And this is the uh, mouse that came with the Amiga 3000 line of computers, which uh, I also have an Amiga 3000, which I'll feature on my channel in a few future episode. Um, you can see it's very similar to the other mouse. Um, it has the ball inside, just like any of the other Amiga mouse. Um, with the Amiga, we never got to enjoy uh, 
the the neutered mouse, the ballless mouse, or the infrared mouse. Um, this is the only type they made for the Commodore. Um, I find this mouse to be pretty nice. I mean, it fits my hand really nicely. You can rest your palm up here. Um, I think it's nice. It's uh, not the most attractive looking mouse, but uh, but definitely a nice nice mouse to work with. Um, I actually bought this mouse new uh, from Software Hut. Um, I think it was like 10 or 15 bucks. Um, but uh, I bought it when I didn't have an Amiga 3000, and then later I ended up buying an Amiga 3000, and that my Amiga 3000 didn't come with the mouse, so now I've got my matching mouse to go with it. So the next mouse that I want to show you, well, is this guy here. Um, this one is a non-branded mouse. Um, it just says, on the back it says, Mouse for Amiga. And it's got a serial number on it. have no idea who made this. I don't even remember how, where I got this. I've had it for so long. I've had this mouse, or this, this trackball, since I was uh, probably about 22, 23 years old. And I, I have no idea of how I got it. Um, this actually works pretty well, but when you haven't used it for a while and you first use it, it's a little sticky. But just kind of spinning the mouse a few times, it, uh, it gets better. I keep calling it a mouse. It's actually a trackball. But uh, let's take a look at the ball inside this thing. If I can get it out. There we go. Yeah, you can see I've actually used this one quite a bit. It's got some uh, some dirt and grunge in there. I could probably clean these little guys up and uh, get a little bit mo better motion out of it. But, uh, but yeah, that's the uh, the mouse for Amiga. And digging in my uh, box of Amiga stuff, I came across this trackball as well. It's uh, kind of exactly the same as the uh, the other one that I've got, except this one's a little bit different. Let me show you. This has got an add-on. So it looks exactly the same as, as this mouse. Um, this one's nice and white, probably because it's been sitting in a box for years and years and years. I don't remember buying this one. I just, I've just had it for so long. Um, but uh, on the Amiga, I don't believe this center mouse will do anything at all. Possibly the mouse is programmed to have a hold function there, but I kind of doubt it. I, I think this is going to be just uh, a non-usable button. Uh, but if you turn it over and look at the bottom, you can see it's actually got a dual setting. You can set it to work with an Atari computer or I can set it for the Amiga, which is actually really nice. So this one, again, there's no brand on it. It just says Amiga and Atari computers, and it's got FCC ID, and that's it, and a serial number. But pretty nice little mouse. I've actually used this one a few times. So make some room here. Of course, uh, sitting here talking mice, how about uh, joysticks? So this is my uh, Wicco. It's a uh, command control. This is, I believe, what they refer to as the bat handle. They also had one that had a ball on it, and they had one that had a grip on it. You could, like, the fire button was here. Um, I've never been a fan of having fire buttons on the stick because I just can't fire as fast. I could always do better with a button on, on the base for firing. Um, now, this joystick was originally made for an Atari 2600. Um, it allows you to switch the joystick, uh, the button input from uh, base to stick. Now, one thing that's interesting, um, this particular joystick, I was playing around with it, some Amiga games support two button uh, mice, or excuse me, two button joysticks, and this one actually does. It works. It, um, you know, for some games, it'll, it'll it register the fire button separately. So I, that surprised me. I don't, I don't know <laughs> what the deal is with that, but, uh, but that's, uh, that's the deal. I've also got several other joysticks in my collection, um, and I will feature those as well in a future episode, so stay tuned. So another little uh, trackpad I've got is this uh, Microspeed. Now I bought this um, from one of the vendors, Amiga vendors, uh, probably 10 years ago or longer, probably 15 years ago. I think they were just basically liquidating all their inventory. Bought it on eBay, got it really cheap. Um, when I got this one, uh, unfortunately, it didn't work. Um, I'll try plugging it in and see if it'll work for me. 
but uh, it's kind of a cute little uh, trackball. You can, can put it in your uh, hand and you can just use your thumb on it and uh, click like this. So it's not bad. I mean, it's it, you wouldn't want to, I mean, just, just a occasional uh, mousing around the screen, it would work perfectly fine. Um, using it on the table though, it's, eh, it's not so good because it's so small, it's easy to bump it and move it around. But, you know, it would work. Um, kind of cute. It's got a tiny little ball in it. You can pop this thing out and take a look. Yeah. See, there's the size of that one. You can compare it to the other ball. which is... So I contacted the company and told them that this one wasn't working. So they were kind enough to send me another one. And they actually said, you know, to go ahead and keep the old one. Um, you know, like I said, they were probably just getting out of it. Now, you can see it says, uh, this is from uh, Microspeed Incorporated. Now, the customer's name is Silent Paw. So they were a uh, Amiga dealer. I haven't had a chance to look them up and see if, uh, I don't think they're in business anymore. But, uh, but anyhow, that's, uh, that's who I bought this from. And uh, I don't remember any instructions that came with it, but it did come with this cute little pouch. And you can open it up. And we've got the little mouse. So here's the exact same, um, keep calling it a mouse, it's not really a mouse, it's a, it's a trackball, but, uh, but there, the same one. This one's working, this one supposedly doesn't work. Maybe one day I'll have to try to dig in there and see if I can figure out why it's not working, or I just don't remember the details on that one. So that's my uh, micro speed uh, mouse for the Amiga. Now, uh, when I was uh, in England, um, I would frequent this uh, used computer store quite often, and uh, I bought a lot of Amiga games there. Um, a lot of my games are from England, uh, but uh, the, this is, uh, was one that was sitting on the shelf with all the programs, and I saw this, and I just grabbed it. I was like, I gotta take this, you know, because I've already had a couple of them already, and they were just really, really good trackballs, so I've got one that's uh, new in the box. So let's go ahead and do an unboxing on this one. We'll take a look inside see what the packaging looks like oh before I open it let's see what we've got as far as uh, you know advertising on it so it says here it's a true docs ergonomic design high resolution excellent tracking and a removable ball um, here it says Amiga mouse for Amiga computers under that it says something else I was trying to read it I can't I just can't get in there and read it so I'm not gonna pull the sticker off I want to keep it original um, so let's take a look inside and see what the packaging looks like inside. So here I've got some foam padding. And there we go. Ooh, look at that. Brand spanking new. White mouse. Got the foam in there. I've got a brand new untouched mouse ball and uh, never been out of the box. Isn't that beautiful? So I'm gonna put this one right back where I found it, in the box, because I have two more to play with. And who knows, maybe in another 20, 30 years from now, I'll need this mouse. So for now, she's going back in the box. So the last trackball I've got for the Amiga is this craft uh, trackball. Found this on eBay probably 10 or 15 years ago. Really excited about seeing this because uh, I've seen these advertised and I thought, man, this would just be such an awesome trackball to have. It's gonna be great. Um, and, uh, and, I, and I got it. Now, this one I've never really used that much. Uh, I tried it once, I think, but uh, maybe I'll play with it a little bit again today. Just kind of give it a feel. Um, Really doesn't say too much on the box. See, it's a craft. It's uh, Craft Systems Incorporated. It's got a five-year warranty, which is pretty darn good. Uh, it's compatible with the Atari ST, the Atari 400 and 1200 series, Commodore Amiga series, and Commodore 64 and 128 computers. Let's see here. It says uh, on here, I don't know if this is in focus or not, but uh, trackball by craft. Take control, join the revolution. Though they may look different, all mice are not. Or uh, says, <laughs> though they may look different, all mice are the same. The Kraft Triple Track is a professional difference. It is best input device for people looking for a faster way to use a computer. And because it mimics a mouse, it works with most exciting mouse software and then some. There we go. So Kraft Systems. It's in uh, California, Vista, uh, California, made in Taiwan. 
says here uh, the trackball data ergonomically designed for the right or left hand use craft uh, triple track has selectable drag button or automatic rapid fire button for better drag action or improved game playing the Craft Triple Pack is compatible with the Atari 520, 1040, Mega 2, Mega 4 ST series, and the Commodore Amiga 500, 1000, 2000, 2500 series, the Commodore 64, 128, and the Atari 400 to 1200 series. No driver software required. Trackball, um, the trackball uses no memory and operates from the mouse or joystick port. It says here that the Commodore 128 and 64 users, the triple track function is a uh, triple track functions as a joystick and mouse mode. Uh, it is not designed to operate on, on the com the Commodore 1351 proportional mouse mode. So that's a kind of a tricky one there. So basically, you can act as a track as a joystick. So you could play with an Atari 2600 with this if you wanted to. Lots of details in here. I'm not going to read everything, but. Uh, the craft uh, trackball revolution in making um, save your workspace. Okay, so you don't have to move around the screen like you do with a mouse. Uh, switch selectable for your computers. No adapters needed. Evolution technology rolls on. Built-in selectable drag button or automatic rapid fire. Exceptionally easy to install. Optomechanical design. Okay, so this is optomechanical. That's good. Uh, and uh, let's see here, it'll keep on rolling for years. And uh, it's all total one handed control. Okay, so we can use. Oh, it's got an optional foot pedal control. Interesting, so I can put a foot pedal on this guy. Okay. Uh, drag button improves dragging. All right. Let's take a look at the craft uh, triple track joystick. Let's see what we got here. Now this one I bought new um, and have not used it hardly. I just like plugged it in once. Um, here's our manual, our user guide. Let's see here. Don't think we're gonna have to do too much. Uh, trackball installation. Okay, turn off your computer and then select which computer type you have. One is the Atari ST, two is the Amiga, and three is the Commodore 64 and Atari 400 series. All right, it tells you which port to put it into. Here's our foot pedal socket. I'm gonna have to try to find that. There we go, foot pedal socket. Here's our mode switch to figure out what that does. Got a locking button, okay. So that'll do uh, drag lock, auto fire, off position, button up, on position, button down. It's got a left, middle, and right. I do remember when I played with it, I did not like the position of these buttons at all. I thought if they would have been above the ball and not below the ball, it would have been easier to use. So I pretty much stopped using it because of that. So here we're going to deal with all this stuff, you know, setting the modes. Not really much to it. I got my warranty card here. I could register it. I wonder if Kraft's still in business. I'll have to take a look and see if Kraft's still around. They used to make pretty good controllers back in the day. There we go. There's oh, craft catalog. Ooh, look at this. Wonder how many of these craft catalogs are still in existence. See, we got the thunder stick. Doesn't look. Yeah, that might be all right. Got flight stick. Let's see here. We've got uh, a KM30 for Mac ADB. The KI30 here. Yeah. This is the Mac ADB trackball, so the same thing as I got here, but for the Macintosh. And oh, there's the uh, the foot pedal. And we've got uh, a GS Plus game card for a PS2 micro channel. Interesting. Software controlled game card. Oh, here we got a craft cable organizer. And a oh, computer cable cover. So this would actually just cover up the back of your computer. Interesting. Here's a craft mouse. I've never seen one of those. I've never seen this top track either. So some interesting stuff there. There we go. Ugh, I got it upside down. So the inside of the box is looking a little rough. Uh, here's a cover. 
but it's stuck to the foam, so we're just gonna leave it alone. Uh, here's the uh, track ball. It's looking all right. It's got a little bit of foam stuck to the cord here. I had had this out once before. Kind of surprised I did such a crappy job putting it back in. I usually put the uh, ties back in place, but I didn't do it for this one. Um, you can see I uh, didn't have the uh, cord lined up properly, and it's mushed into the styrofoam pretty good. Not a bad looking trackball. Look at that. So, action. It's, it's all right. Rose okay. The thing about trackballs is they always kind of fight you a little bit. You know that when you, you're pushing left and right, they kind of want to drag kind of diagonally. They don't want to really go left and right, and it's because of the way the rollers are, are aligned on these little guys. So, like if you're playing centipede or anything like that, and you try to spin the wall really fast, it'll always kind of like curve up on you. Um, the, the buttons are definitely the weakest point of this trackball. Maybe after, if I used a lot, I would get more comfortable with it. So this is my uh, auto fire and drag options. So I can use that and I'll just lock on, lock off. Let's take a look underneath. Ah, oh, okay, so this is a connector from my optional foot pedal. And this is the uh, switches for which kind of computer I've got. So one was Atari and two was a Amiga. So that kind of shows where uh, Commodore was at the time. They were behind Atari. And then three would be for your Commodore line of computers, um, the uh, Commodore 64 and whatnot. So, so now you've gone through, I've gone through all the different controllers. Let's go ahead and uh, maybe plug a couple of these and see how they work. Okay, so I'm back at my Amiga. I've got it powered up. I actually had to borrow the uh, hard drive, which is a compact flash from my Amiga 4000 because I haven't gotten around to creating an image for this computer yet. But I will do that for an upcoming uh, episode on how to install software on your Amiga 500. Um, now, this is, uh, this is the mouse I've used for many, many years, or the trackpad I've used for many years. It's uh, completely unbranded. Um, and this one, it works pretty good most of the time. It, it does tend to kind of stick every now and then. Uh, it's working pretty well for me right now. Um, just like the, uh, the Amiga, you've got your select button. So if I go over to the, uh, the Amiga hard drive here, I can click it and open stuff up. Um, boy, I don't have anything on this hard drive. Yeah, interesting. I thought I had games, but I don't have any games or anything. Let's see if I've got any utilities in here. Utilities. I do have some utilities. Let's see, do I have a drawing program? I have design works. It's gonna be kind of a I was kind of hoping to have like a drawing program to play around with, but uh don't have anything installed. So so we're just going to do the basics here. Um, now for the Amiga, if I wanted to drag and drop this, I could like click and hold and drop. And we'll see how that works out on the uh, other track pads. Um, this is my menu select, my right mouse button. So I can you know, like redraw all or do other things like that. View by name. Now I can see the names of the folders and whatnot. But yeah, it works pretty well. It, it uh, One thing I like about this mouse, it's been very durable. It's lasted a long time for me. so. Not bad. So let's take a look at our next mouse. We'll do the three button guy. Now, when you're working with these old computers, uh, it's probably best to turn off your computer before you insert a device such as a mouse. Um, and that's because uh, it's, you know, dealing with voltages, going through some pretty sensitive circuitry inside the computer. You definitely don't want to yank things like this mouse in and out while the computer's operating. So I'm going to go ahead and shut her down and we'll continue on. Okay, so this is my uh, my three button no brand mouse. Um, it's actually, you can hear it's dragging. It's a little sticky, 
probably because it doesn't have any kind of hand oil or anything like that on there. Nothing to kind of like lubricate it. So I probably need to oil this guy, uh, get it a little bit uh, loosened up a little bit. But she's a little stiff. Um, let's take a look at the mice. So that's our regular old select. And then this middle mouse button, yep, does not do anything at all. And then this, the little mouse button on this right pops up our menus. So that's going to be the same uh, with my unboxed one. It's going to be the exact same behavior. So I'm not even going to bother with that one. So let's take a look at my next uh, trackball and see how that one works. Okay, so this is my micro speed mouse. As you can tell, it's very small when you compare it to the size of the Amiga 500. Um, this is kind of cool. You could actually set it up here and use it as a mouse. Okay, so this one's not working completely. I can see the up and down motion are not working. Um, that's why I got another one sent to me. Now, as far as buttons go, this is um, going to be your select button. And the middle mouse button probably doesn't do anything on the Amiga because the Amiga was never programmed for a third mouse button. Now, of it, something a little interesting fact is Commodore actually patented the two button mouse um, and they actually defined the select and the menu buttons um, before uh, Windows. So, uh, so Amiga 500 or excuse me, Amiga 1000 came out in 85, which uh, I believe predates Windows. Uh, you can correct me below if I'm in, uh, if I'm wrong, but. Uh, from memory serves me correctly, Commodore had a uh, patent on that two-button mouse, which would have been very valuable at the time. Um, so yeah, this one doesn't work, so let's try the other micro speed and see if I have any better luck. Okay, so this is my, oh geez, this is my other micro speed mouse, and this one barely works for up and down, so... I don't know, there must have been some quality control with these little guys. <laughs> So, not very impressed with the micro speed. So, if you come across a brand new micro speed, um, or even a used micro speed, you might want to think twice about buying it. So, you can see this one's barely functioning. Might have to tear one of these apart someday and see if I can figure out what the heck's going on. But, definitely a fail. Um, cute, but n not much good. Yeah, unfortunately. Okay, so this is my, ooh, Craft Triple Track, and I can tell the lock is on. Ooh, this actually has really nice um, motion as far as, the, as, the, as far as the tracking goes. Very impressed. I like this one. This is actually really nice. Um, pushing the middle mouse, oh, you can see grabs. Um, on the Amiga, if you left click, you can pull down a window, exposing a window behind, which is a very cool little trick on the Amiga computer. Another thing the Amiga computer can do is display two different resolutions on the same screen, so you can have like a low, resolu low resolution workbench screen, you can be drawing something in deluxe paint, pull down the low resolution screen, actually see the high resolution, sc high resolution screen behind the low, res re low resolution screen, or vice versa. Um, let's see here. Yeah, um, the mouse buttons are, I guess it's not too bad when you think about it. Like your fingers are going to be up here. I guess the idea is that you're going to click with your um, with your thumb. It's not too bad. I guess it just takes a little get, getting used to. So maybe you'll start seeing me using this craft in uh, future episodes because uh, might as well get some use out of it. You know, I paid for it. Might as well use it. Um, let's see here. Uh, your, oh, yeah, the... The uh, menu select is a little tricky to get to, so let's see here. Oh, this is weird. So this is my um, uh, left mouse button. This is my right mouse button. And this one here, I guess, is my click and drag. Yeah, kind of weird, a little bit different. So yeah, definitely a nice, uh, nice trackball. Um, I would say if you find one, go for it. It's pretty nice. Um, just take a little bit getting used to the buttons, the key lo button locations, but not too bad. Now, a couple that I can't show you in operation, at least until I get my CD TV going, is I can't show you this because it is in no way compatible with the Amiga 500. Well, that'd be kind of a cool little project, creating a mouse uh, receiver for this uh, trackpad. But, uh, but yeah, it would take a lot of 
a lot of different programming because none of these functions would work on the Amiga 500. Um, I could plug in one of my uh, later model mice. I could I could plug in my uh, this mouse, but you know I'm going to save this for my Amiga uh, 3000 unboxing video. We'll do that one. And I could also, you know, plug this one in. It's going to work the same. But again, I'm not going to bother doing that on the Amiga 500. I'll do this on the uh, on my Amiga. 1200 or my Amiga 4000 uh, uh, desktop computer video. Uh, let me know in the comments below which you'd like to see first, the Amiga 3000 or the uh, Amiga 4000 uh, computers. So yeah, that pretty much wraps up um, Amiga controllers, or at least uh, mouse input controllers. Um, I appreciate you watching the video, and uh, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe, and uh, I'll have more coming out in the future. Take care and goodbye.